gotta run. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is Hideki Kinoshita. He's a member of the Marathon Maniacs. But what really caught my attention was this recent New York City Marathon when he ran as a superhero, as one of my favorite comic book characters, Thor, for the Team Hope to support pancreatic cancer. Please welcome to the show, Kino. Thanks for having me on the show, Will. I appreciate the it's invitation. It's a pleasure to see you. Kino, let's get started, as I do with all my shows, a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? A little bit about your family, something about your schooling. I was actually born in New York City, out in Queens, and raised out in New Jersey in a small suburb called Leonia, New Jersey, which is right next door to Fort Lee, where the other side of the George Washington Bridge is. Mm -hmm. And I'm 32 years old. I went to school down in Maryland at Johns Hopkins University, which is in Baltimore. From kindergarten to high school, I stayed in the public school system for the town that I grew up in, Leonia, New Jersey. It's a very okay. small township. When I lived there, the population ranged anywhere from 7,000 to 9,000. Mm -hmm. We actually did have our own high school. As a youngster, were you involved in athletics? I was. It's, it's interesting because I was never um, into individual sports. All the way until high school, I was only involved in team sports. In the fall, I would start off with soccer. In the winter, I'd switch to basketball. And then in the spring, I would play baseball. Now you said you went on to John Hopkins. That was for my undergraduate studies. Um, I graduated there with dual majors. One was Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. My other major was a Bachelor of Arts in East Asian Studies. I was in school for a while, so I ended up with a minor in history. Continued my education at Columbia University, where I studied electrical engineering, received the master's from there. I don't think there's any tougher degree in the sciences and electrical engineering. Oh, it's one of the toughest ones. <laughs> well, congratulations oh, on you. that. Now, we were going in uh, college and graduate school. Were you keeping up your athletic uh, endeavors? Not at all. I would pretty much just play intramural sports here and there. In graduate school, I did absolutely no athletic. It's a tough major, I could imagine, uh, the long hours. At some point, you must have rediscovered running because you're a marathon maniac, and we'll cover what that means. Okay. So describe your first uh, taste of running again. I absolutely hated running and avoided it at all costs possible. Okay. So what got me into running was the first ever Japan Day race was coming up, and I figured, oh, I should join and try to support the cause and try to help Japan. So that was back in 2007 in June, and it was just a short four mile race. I hadn't trained for it. I jumped in, I registered thanks to my friend, his name is Yasu, and ran the race and it didn't go well at all. I went out too fast. I pretty much hit Especially the wall. Especially if you didn't for it. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back on it, it's funny because it's a four mile race and in some of the races I do these days, the distance between aid stations isn't even four miles, it's longer than that. After that, I had no desire to um, sign up for any more races. I was done, pretty much. And then that same friend managed to convince me to go cheer for him in the marathon that year, which was in November 2007 for the New York City Marathon. Right. And that was pretty much the turning point which inspired me to want to train for marathons and get involved in the sport. But what was it that, that inspired you? Just seeing the energies of the people? Exactly. I saw people that could be as old as my grandparents running it, and I felt to myself that I needed to do something like that and have a goal to train for. And if they can do it, then I probably could also okay, give it a If they year. can do it, you can do it. That was the attitude that I had. So what was your plan after that? The very next day after the marathon, when I went to cheer, I signed up for New York Roadrunners and became a member and signed up for a bunch of races. Right, right. So by then, for the 9 plus 1 guarantee program, it was too late. Right. So I entered the lottery for 2008. I wasn't accepted because, as you know, if you live in the New York City area, chances are Slept to none. <laughs> but in hindsight, that turned out to be a blessing also because I wasn't accepted. I felt the void to try to make up for that, and I signed up for the Chicago Marathon instead. Yasu, who was my coworker, pointed out that there happened to be a marathon in Yonkers where we worked, and that's the second oldest marathon in the country called the Yonkers Marathon. It is, but it's also very, very, very tough. Very brutal. I signed up for that as a training run for my Chicago Marathon. My Chicago Marathon was my goal race. But it was interesting because that marathon has a strict five-hour cutoff time, and it's not the wisest race to choose as your first one, and it's no, known it as a very hilly, <laughs> hilly race. And right. I finished in five hours, zero minutes, and 15 seconds. I was the third to last runner to finish. Okay. You should have been proud of, of finishing that marathon at that time frame. Out of all the marathons I've run, that was easily the most painful. And then a month later, I ran Chicago. And then by then, I had already caught the marathon bug, so I signed up for 
the Philadelphia Marathon, which was another month later. So coincidentally, that qualified me for a club that we're both in called the Marathon Maniacs. Right, right. It's an organization with members all across the world with over 4,600 members. Mm -hmm. And the lowest minimal uh, requirement to qualify for it is either running two marathons within a three-week span or three within three months. And without even knowing about the club, I'd already qualified. I found out about the club through reading one of Dean Carnazzi's books, the book um, where he finished 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 oh, he days. He only did that like two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then he mentioned the Marathon Maniacs in that book. As soon as I read the passage about the Marathon Maniacs, I looked them up and joined. And it's interesting because at that time when I joined, I'd never met a single maniac, nor had I ever seen one. But I just liked the idea of the club where a bunch of crazies can congregate and feel at home. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they have their own shirts and, uh, mm -hmm. and so forth. They probably their own uh, social gatherings. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Best decisions in my running career to join the club. To join the Marathon Maniacs. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're on Facebook, they're on everywhere. Oh, yeah, they have a huge presence. Uh, okay. I only recently joined because of you. I realized back in my early days that I did three marathons in two months, purely by accident also. I mean, that was that planned. Mm -hmm. But getting back to you, mm -hmm. but something else happened because you really went, people would describe as overboard. So why did you go to this overdrive need to, to run more marathons? The girlfriend that I was dating at the time, her mother was diagnosed with stage four um, pancreatic cancer. As soon as we found out, both of us became volunteers for um, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, which is a national organization based on LA. I joined Team Hope on behalf of Pancreatic Cancer Action Network because I believe that pancreatic cancer is an incredibly underfunded disease. By joining with Team Hope, we're creating hope for tens of thousands of people who will develop pancreatic cancer. I think it's important that people pick something in life that they believe in, something to stand up for, something to fight for. My husband Michael died of pancreatic cancer uh, in 1991. Michael was given three to six months. He literally was diagnosed April 1st and died July 1st, three months after. It's a very deadly disease. In, in order to join Team Hope and do the race for Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, you absolutely don't need to be an athlete. Um, you can swiftly walk with me. I will be there, swiftly walking. So one way to raise awareness was to um, I guess sign up for races and try to raise money that way. Her mother's condition kept deteriorating at a rapid rate. So she was diagnosed in January, and by August she had passed away. So it was pretty devastating to yeah. have to see her in that condition. And unfortunately for myself, I had to go through that once before for my closest uncle who passed away from the disease. He was diagnosed in November and passed away in January. So it's a quick a and quick, yeah. brutal disease. And then after joining the organization, doing research about the disease, realized that it's heavily underfunded. There's not much awareness about it. Pretty much the people who are diagnosed with the disease um, die too quickly and their condition deteriorates enough um, so fast that they can't really campaign. It's as a disease that Patrick Swayze died. And, and Steve Jobs a, passed away. Probably going to get a little more awareness. Yeah. And Steve then, Jobs, that's right. And the Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg had it, but I th think they were able to successfully remove it. Yeah, well, surgery. she's still kicking. Also, Michael Landon, the Bonanza star. Our participation was a way to create awareness. It's a way to run for people who have lost people and people who are fighting this disease. I am running in honor of my husband. Today I'm running for my dad. Um, it's a year ago this week that he was diagnosed. I'm Robert Mills. I'm the uh, coach for Team Hope and I'm running today for a great cause. Oh, 
I'm doing this for my husband. I'm doing this for people that are fighting pancreatic cancer. I know that we're creating awareness and we're raising funds. Whether it's running a race or volunteering your time or donating money, there's a lot you can do. Uh, I ran in honor of my father who we lost a couple years ago to pancreatic cancer. He kind of gave me that boost knowing I was doing it in memory of him. I love the cheers from little kids saying, I believe in you. It was, it was a great sense of like community. I think to see people come together, it's inspiring. It's a pretty extraordinary feeling. I am Team Hope. 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 You took on the challenge to honor your, your girlfriend's mom, mm -hmm. and to honor your uncle, mm -hmm. and what was the challenge you picked in so that, Team Hope? After reading Dean's book, which had a, a profound influence on me, five marathons in five states in five weeks consecutively. It's funny because as the fundraiser was going along, more and more people helped, um, helped support and encouraged me to keep the fundraising drive going. And I thought after five weeks, my body would break down and I would have to take a long break, but I started PRing and becoming faster and faster, and then five weeks became 13 weeks. And I threw in a double, which means running a marathon on Saturday and then another one on Sunday. What was that double? Do you remember? That was on Saturday, I ran the Baltimore Marathon. This is the same weekend as Chicago Marathon, uh -huh. so it's the second weekend of October. And then the next day, I drove up to Scranton, Pennsylvania and ran Steamtown Marathon, <laughs> which is a nice small downhill race. Just next to that must have been uh, tremendous. Mm -hmm. How did you manage? Uh, I mean, you didn't drive everywhere. No, a lot of flying was involved. And how did you manage to get help on log logistics of this? I would try to um, split rooms with people and split travel costs. So it takes a lot of planning to do this. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. this is very time consuming, not only doing mm -hmm. the, these marathons, but it's very time consuming to planning these things. Especially for marathon doubles, I always tell people that the actual logistics of getting to the start line for both races is much more difficult than running the two marathons in two days. Okay, so you successfully did 14 marathons. It was a huge accomplishment. Uh, my friends and family and other supporters ended up donating over $10,000 to PanCan. And then prior to that, my girlfriend and I did a team relay, which was a one-day, 90-plus mile relay that cut across New Jersey from the west to east. And that was called River to Sea, and we raised over $26,000. And that was also for PanCan. Just for that one relay? Just for that one relay. It's very interesting. Yeah. So back then, um, PanCan didn't have an official charity team. And then it's since developed. It's called Team Hope. And then there are two different versions of it. You can join the individual program and just pick a race and any race and fundraise f like I did back in 2008 for my 13 week campaign. Mm -hmm. Or you can join the team for official charity races. Right now there are about three per year. Um, Miami's the first one in January. And then there's one in June that rotates around. Sometimes it's in Kona, Hawaii. This past year it was in Seattle. And then they were just accepted to the New York City Marathon as an official charity, and I decided to run for them. To date, I've run 80 marathons and ultras, and out of those, 17 of them have been for raising funds for PanCan and other 80. charities. 80? Well, you went from uh, <laughs> three in one year, mm -hmm. 14 in, in uh, 13 weeks, oh, so and then you just kept going. <laughs> it's, and, but it's that's an addiction. amazing, the kind of nutritional thing that you follow. Just make sure to try to rest enough and eat enough. If you're running that close together, the interweek training doesn't matter as much because your body's already conditioned to handle 26.2 miles. Okay. Especially if you're also used to running ultra marathons, which is another thing I like to do. I'll run with Nike Town and other groups. And Regardless of what city there is, there's always a running group. Mm -hmm. In New York, of course, is especially blessed. Like you said, Nike Town and, uh, and dozens of other great groups, like the Dashing Whippets. I think you run with them, mm -hmm. with a lot of the members. That's a great group also. Mm -hmm. But going from a marathon to an ultra marathon, that's a big step. How did you make that transition? I took it in baby steps. The first ultra I signed up for was a 50K out in New Jersey. And it was painful, to say the least. I did hit the wall. But for ultras, you 
definitely start off at a slower clip, probably at least a minute per mile slower than a, than a marathon. They tend to be on nasty terrain. A lot of it is on what kind of terrain? Nasty. Nasty. <laughs> lots of rocks, <laughs> lots of elevation change. So it's, it's like apples and oranges. It's hard to compare marathon running to ultras. It's, it's a different atmosphere because it's not really time oriented unless you're one of the elites trying to win, win the race. It's more, there's a more collegial aspect to it where a lot of times ultra runners will buddy up and run together. And then you see a lot less people wearing iP iPhones, listening to music. It's about enjoying the nature and the scenery. That a lot of them tend to be in pretty national parks or state parks. Well, you're out there for a long time. Oh, you, yes. you, you should have something to enjoy. <laughs> it's, it's scenic. If it's more scenic, the better. You <laughs> said your 50K was very painful, mm -hmm. but yet you went out to do is do more. What motivated you to continue? It's just a curiosity in seeing how far you can push your body, what your body's capable of. So. After knocking off a 50K, you naturally become curious as to see if you can knock off a 50 miler. And then from then, you see if you can last in a 24 hour race and see how far you can go. And then after. So that, a 24 hour race, you just run for 24 hours to just you, run for 24 you, hours. you stop. And then, and then you see how many miles you've done. Exactly. You're free to take naps and eat and one up, but the clock's constantly ticking. So right, if right. you nap, you snooze, you lose. So if you want to accumulate the miles, you just. Keep on going, drink okay. some caffeine. But usually the goal at 24 is to do at least 100. Mm -hmm. That's a big goal for people. When did you do your first 24 hours? My first 24 was in 2009. It was in Philadelphia. It's actually the largest 24 hour race in the nation. It's called Back of My Feet Lone Ranger Ultra Marathon. It's called 20 and 24. It was started by a charity down there called Back of My Feet, which I've raised funds for. It was founded by a, a young woman who used to run past the homeless population on the morning jogs and then all of a sudden just hit her one day that she felt bad that all these people were just living on the streets and she's running each day and she felt that there was a need to help them out. Mm -hmm. So she turned down her first job offer and decided to start this motivational organization where they take the homeless population and encourage them to run and then whoever's interested will keep on joining the group training runs and then that'll become a motivational factor in them picking up in life, looking for jobs and starting wow. fresh. And the organization's helped a lot of people. And it's off, just a recent thing, 2007 you said it started? I ran in 2009. The organization probably started around then in oh, okay. 2007. So you did it first time, 24 hours. How did you do? I ran 80 miles. There's additional safety factors built into 24. I believe the doctors check you at a certain uh, mm -hmm. milestones to make sure you haven't lost too much weight? Is that Some races have mandatory weigh-ins. There was a 24-hour race I ran in June up in Minnesota, and every six hours we'd be forced to weigh ourselves on a scale, and if you lost X percentage of body weight, then you were forced to sit down and eat and drink, and then I believe if you lost 10%, then there was a good chance that they would force you to quit. Yeah, yeah. So, but you're saying not every 24 hour have follows the same. Not everyone has that, but there's okay, plenty of. Okay, I wasn't sure if there was a national standard. Oh, no. There's, there's plenty not. of medical staff around, and if you're well, okay. feeling dizzy or whatnot, they'll pull your side. Because it, it can't be dangerous to run mm -hmm. that long, because my friend, who's an Iron Man, he did his first 24 in Vermont, and his kidneys failed. Oh, wow. I mean, he did it 24 hours, mm -hmm. but uh, he was being blood. So it can't be very dangerous, so. Yeah, you have to be careful for You have to be careful. So you, you must have an unusual body type. Uh, not too many people can do this. I feel like most people who run are capable of something like this. You just have to be crazy enough to push yourself. And okay, you gotta have a little, a little craziness in you. Yeah, a lot of it is, me is mental, I'd have to say, especially after the f first 50 miles. It's purely mental because your mind's fighting your body, it's just telling you to quit, lay down on the side, take a nap, especially when you see all these other people napping and dropping out. For 24 hour races, you see a whole bunch of people dropping out and they never jump back into the race after that. Well, how many 24 hours have you done? I have done three 24 hour races. Wow. And then in two of them, I broke 100 miles. Okay. That's pretty much the standard. Excellent. I, I think you get a belt buckle if you do 24, 100 miles and 24 oh, hours? For 24 hour races, it tends to be a medal, but for the 100 mile races, those have a whole history of providing belt buckles. And that goes back to the very first 100 mile race, which is called Western States 100, which used to be a horse race, actually. But then 
this one runner, or he wasn't a runner at the time, his name was Gordy Ainsloop. His horse came up limp when he was training for the race, and he said, I've, he said, I'm not going to give up my slot. I'm going to actually just do the race on my own without the horse. And he ran it, and he finished it, and he actually beat some people who use their horses. And Western States, Western States, States 100. That's, what, that's the one that started off. And for that race, they gave out belt buckles because these people were, I guess, horse riders, so it's, oh, okay. it goes with the okay. attire. It's interesting, I was reading, you got to do 100 miles before you consider what to be a true author marathon. Yeah, some and you say. certainly reached that. You're doing uh, another charity for, for an upcoming event. Is this the Houston Marathon you're doing next? Yes, it's the 2012 Houston Marathon, and I'm raising funds for the American Cancer Society, which is the largest nonprofit charity devoted to helping out cancer victims and promoting research and awareness. American Cancer Society. Well, I know the, uh, the local coach for the, for the New York area, yeah. Ramon Burmo, and he heads up the determination. Mm -hmm. Are you be running as part of determination or as part yes, of? Yes, I will. Yeah. It'll be my first time running with that program. And determination. Mm -hmm. It's a great program. Yeah, it's a great program. But this is for the Houston chapter. Yes, okay. for the Gulf Coast chapter, which covers the coastline and I think even some of the Gulf states. Great. How much funds do you hope to raise for American Cancer My goal Society? is to raise at least 1250 and currently past 900 Oh, so sounds like uh, you're can... well on your way. Sounds like it. Well, Thanks to uh, uh, all my gracious supporters. That's, that's, that is, that's a great thing to do. So just, and you had no history in your childhood other than playing uh, scholastic sports mm -hmm. that you would turn into this uh, marathon maniac, yeah. enthusiastic and prolific one. Yeah, the bugs hit a lot of my friends too, so it's it's a disease that's spreading, and it's hopefully a good, it's a healthy disease. It sounds like a good disease to catch, mm -hmm. because you also say, especially in the uh, in the ultras, that the that the camaraderie is even ultra camaraderie. That's I great, mean, there's yeah. a lot of camaraderie in marathons. Doing ultras, you really need a crew in place because you're doing it hundred miles. Makes a huge difference. Yeah, a lot of people will bring pacers, uh, travel together, and just run together the whole time. It's some of these races have 30-hour cutoffs, 36-hour cutoffs, 48, and it's pretty lonely to be out there late at night just with a headlamp running by yourself in the woods or in the desert. So it makes a huge difference. Every time I've had a pacer for a 100-mile race, I've actually finished it. So it makes a huge difference. And okay. a couple times I've had to drop out, and none of those times did I have a pacer. So I feel Yeah, you need, you need to have a good crew. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of your goals is to do bad water at some point. That's an eventual goal if, if I'm capable of it. Um, that one has no aid stations because the temperature, it's out in Death Valley in the hottest time of year in July, and Death Valley is one of the hottest places, or if not the hottest place in the lower 48 states. And for that one, temperatures go up to the 120s, maybe even 130s. So you can't have aid stations out there because the the aid workers will, will be in danger. Never mind exactly. the, <laughs> the runners. <laughs> they'd be a high, high So risk. there you need a crew. In fact, mm -hmm. before you, one of the qualifications, I don't know what they are, but you have to crew first for one of the... Uh, I think that's more of an unwritten qualification, but I'm hoping to experience that side of the race this summer because one of my good running friends is entering. And then another qualification is to finish three trail 100-milers, and I've... I've hit that minimum. You've gotten at least that, I, I have so that, you've yeah. got a crew for somebody. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if it was a written rule or not written rule, but it sounds like a sensible rule to see what you're getting into. It's a smart rule, I feel like. Okay. All right, well, those are great future challenges. Yeah. Are you still doing engineering work, or is this full-time yeah. work? <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still in the field of engineering as a consultant for the tra mass transit industry, so I work on train projects. Oh, excellent, excellent. Was there anything else you want to cover before we, we sign off? I just want to thank everyone who supported me along the way, just donations for the fundraisers and just emotional support and moral support from runners, fellow runners as yourself. It's made a huge difference. Well, you know, before we go, what's the story on this costume? So every year uh, for the New York City Marathon, I like to dress up in a costume because it's a race with the largest amount of fan support. It's estimated that there are two million fans each year. So you actually build off the energy of the fans when you do dress up. And as a fan that's cheering, they enjoy it, seeing people that are dressed up. It's entertainment for them instead of just seeing thousands and thousands of runners just dressed in running gear. So 
this year, my friends and I decided to dress up in the whole superhero theme because superhero movies were pretty big this year. And then some of us went to a costume shop, and then when I tried on this Thor outfit, I instantly liked it. I enjoyed the movie a lot. You, too, look, so. you look great in that outfit. Mm -hmm. Thor, one of my oh, favorite comic book hear. heroes. Not the major ones, but <laughs> uh, certainly uh, a very famous, a very popular one. By Odin. And you liked the movie, you said. Yeah. And then for the New York City Marathon, I pretty much ran with the, the hammer the whole time. And then I, since I did run as part of Team Hope, I draped the hammer with my charity team jersey. Oh. So oh, hopefully, I think we have a picture of that we'll show uh, on the uh, post-production. Yeah. The media took pictures of me and I, sh I ended up in articles and hopefully by dressing up, I raise awareness for Excellent. the fight against pancreatic cancer. Well, that got you here to gotta run, but you gotta have a superhero. <laughs> thank you so much. Right, thank, thank you, you so very much, much Will. I appreciate it. Great, great look.